So, on Tuesday 16th of February, Boris Johnson and Matt Handcrock officially announced the new drop tower at Chessington World of Adventures Resort, and confirmed its long suspected name of Croc Drop. This was teased with a clever image posted on Chessington's social media the night before. Alongside the announcement of the ride was the release of the ride's logo and concept art, which both look stunning. As already joked by theme park enthusiasts and Chessington alike, the logo does look very similar to Oblivion's logo, but I think doing something similar to Oblivion's logo is justified, with both rides focusing on their drops. Personally, I am a big fan of the ride's logo and I think the concept art is great, as unlike some concept arts, it doesn't overpromise. Chessington described the ride on their website as follows. Brave the drop, release the curse. Set to drop in spring, those daring will plunge 25 metres into the jaws of a crocodile. Sobek, the ancient Egyptian crocodile god and protector of the Nile, who has been possessed by evil spirits, transforming him into a cruel deity. With the once fertile Nile laying stagnant, riders must take part in a ceremony to banish the evil spirits from Sobek, plunging into the crocodile's soul and freeing the waters back into the Nile. Those between 1.2 metres and 1.3 metres must be accompanied by an adult over the age of 16, while those a minimum height of 1.3 metres can drop alone. And Tim Harrison Jones, Divisional Director at Chessington, said, We're thrilled to announce our new ride, Croc Drop. It's going to be a great addition to our theme park, which along with our zoo and resort hotels are temporarily closed until it's appropriate to reopen, as we adhere to government guidance in response to COVID-19. This one-of-a-kind drop tower has been over two years in the making and is nearing final construction in our land, Forbidden Kingdom. Just at the sight of it, let alone the thrilling ride itself, guests' jaws will drop. We already had an idea of what the ride would look like thanks to some excellent insights to not just Croc Drop, but the wider park from ITV News and Good Morning Britain. We saw footage of the ride testing and it was possible to get a closer look at a number of things relating to the ride and Forbidden Kingdom too. However, before I talk about the present and the future, I would like to delve back into the past and look at a few things. Because what we have got with Croc Drop and the plans that were originally submitted are a little different. The first thing I noticed, and for a while I convinced myself I'd got it wrong, was the height of the ride. Originally, as the plans on screen show, the ride was supposed to be buried into the pit left behind when Ramesses' Revenge departed. However, this has not been the case and the ride building is built on the same level as the area. I'm certainly not complaining as I think the ride is better out of the pit than in it, but it certainly took me by shock when I looked the plans over before writing this script. The second thing I noticed upon watching the Good Morning Britain drone footage is that the position of the queue appears to have been moved entirely around the front of the ride. Originally there were supposed to be three different queue lines that would converge in front of the entrance to the ride building. This was because on the original plans, Crop Drop appeared to be utilising all the original Ramesses Revenge queue lines and pathways rather than remove them unnecessarily. However, I can only see two queue lines from the drone footage. Potentially, I could be unable to see one of the three queue lines and that could just be it. Or, there could only be two queue lines now with Fast Track and Wrap sharing a queue. There'd be no need to have three queues converge from different angles seeing as they're no longer using the old Ramesses Revenge pathways, but equally, they could be installing queues in similar places as a slight throwback to the old ride. It's hard to tell, so this one will be a wait and see until we can get back into the park. The third thing I noticed is the planned water effects appear to be either missing or just relocated from the entrance, as it was planned that you would enter the ride building through a waterfall. I hope they have found another way to incorporate water to the ride, maybe with little ponds or streams running through the area, to tie into the theme of the ride and make Croc Drop feel more unique. 
And finally, it is rather hard to tell from the drone footage what has become of the old Flying Jumbo's rodeo site. Will the Croc Drop Cube be extending further into the old rides area, if they have made changes to the way the queues have been built, or will it be landscaped over as was originally planned? I'm not sure at the moment, as I can see construction vehicles there in the Good Morning Britain footage, but something that also caught my eye was the piece of Flying Jumbo's backdrop laying against Croc Drop's building. Could we be seeing a through fair built between the Croc Drop, Zufari, Forbidden Kingdom and Pharaoh's Bazaar area into the Scorpion Express area? I truly hope so, as I have been saying since the plans came out, that it's a lost opportunity if Chessington don't do it, and it would certainly be a welcome addition, for me at least. Coming back to the present, there are a few more things that I have noticed from the footage that I think are worth talking about. From looking at the footage, it is clear social distancing screens have been adopted to the ride, which I think is excellent, as with a ride capacity of only 16, queue times might be a bit of an issue at the best of times. So this move by Chessington to minimise the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on this one ride is an excellent idea as far as I'm concerned. Keeping with the ride gondola, I notice that it has a covering over the top. I hope it's not permanent as I think it would feel a little weird on the ride to have something covering our heads and might take away from the ride experience, but I will reserve judgement until I've been on the ride for the first time. This brings me nicely on to the next thing I want to talk about, which is the ride cycle. With the ride being capable of spinning, dropping and bouncing, I hope we get a selection of ride programmes that would make each ride experience different to the last and also add to that off-ride appeal too. Another interesting thing I noticed is the painting of hieroglyphics that appear to spell out Sobek, not just on the ride building, but also all around the ride's area's perimeter fencing. In addition to this painting, it appears that some of the supporting poles for the old Ramesses Revenge queue are getting repainted. I hope this level of care and detail will be extended to the entire Forbidden Kingdom to help it feel fresh and new for the first time in many years. Nick Hudson confirmed on Twitter that he will be composing the score for the ride. We got an awesome teaser as part of the announcement video, and he also confirmed on an Instagram Q&A, as of the making of this video, that he is yet to finish the full soundtrack. Finally, Chessington have released their new social media cover art with Croc Drop front and centre. I truly hope this ride can continue Chessington's push to really get back to their roots of well-themed experiences that everyone can enjoy. That being said, I am very excited to see this progress on Croc Drop. Anyone following me on Twitter might have guessed that already. And I truly can't wait to get down to Chessington and experience Croc Drop for the first time. What I can see of the ride so far is beyond excellent and has continued with the high quality work we have come to expect from Chessington in the last few years. That being said, what do you guys think about Croc Drop? Do you like the look of the ride or are you still mourning Ramesses Revenge? If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe if you are new, and share your thoughts in the comments. I always love to read them.